guys, it's Shonda the Rat, and for today's video, I wanted to talk some about kidney failure in rats. So, for those of you who don't know, this is my rat, Donut, and she unfortunately does have some kidney failure going on, uh, among a bunch of other issues. And that's kind of what led to me wanting to make this video, because, well, I don't think I've seen too much about kidney failure in rats online, so I just figured it might be nice to have, kind of contribute a little bit more information on that. Uh, although I do recommend checking out a sumo rats channel if you're looking for any sort of in-depth health stuff because they have some really good videos on that including kidney issues. Anyways, kidney failure is most common in male rats over a year and a half of age although you can also find it in female rats on occasion. It's just less common. Some typical symptoms include drinking more water, peeing more often and often more dilute so it's going to be more clear than yellow. Uh, oftentimes the rat will have less of an appetite um, because kidney failure can actually make them nauseous and even though rats can't throw up, they can feel nauseous so they might not want to eat. Uh, on top of that, you might see some lethargy, some puffiness, you know, typical sickness symptoms. Fur loss can also be another sign of kidney failure. Uh, Donuts here is mainly a side effect of another medication she's on for another health issue. Uh, however, you can see some fur loss due to kidney failure. So if your rat is suddenly losing fur and they don't have any sort of medication with that sort of side effect, then they're not like a rex or double rex, then you might want to look into testing their urine because that can be a sign of kidney failure. Finally, probably the most common sign of kidney issues in rats is hind leg degeneration. Uh, this is something that, again, you most often see in older male rats. However, you can occasionally see it in females as well. Uh, hind leg degeneration is when the rats slowly lose their ability to control their hind legs and feel their hind legs. And eventually in male rats, it typically ends with them being fully paralyzed from the waist down. In female rats, it's usually more mild and you usually see it stop at a certain point. So they don't typically get to full hind leg paralysis. But still, if you see any sort of hind leg degeneration in your rats, it's a good idea to test their urine and see if they have protein in it or a higher pH. Because again, that's often a sign of kidney failure. And hind leg degeneration and kidney failure go hand in hand. And if you have a urinalysis testing strip, which I do recommend using if you suspect your rat has kidney failure, uh, you'll want one with at least protein and pH on it if you're looking for kidney failure because a high pH and some level of protein in the urine is a good indication of kidney failure. And in fact, I've done a whole video on your analysis and how you can use that for your rats. Um, I will show a clip in this video, but I will also link that video down below if you want to specifically see how you can do that. If your rat has protein in their urine and their urine has a higher pH than usual, then that is a good indication of kidney issues. Now, as far as treatment goes, you don't have too many options, unfortunately. Uh, the big one is often just changing their diet. Rats with kidney failure need a lower protein diet, around 12% is best. And they also should have a lower percentage of phosphorus in their diet, around 0.5%. Both of these nutrients play a very important role in rat diets, however, an excess of them can cause kidney issues, which is why rats with kidney failure need a reduced amount of them. On top of that, it's also a good idea to add in some kidney-friendly supplements. For example, you can get this Ipacotin powder. I believe it can be spelled with an I or an E. The one in the U.S. is spelled with an E, but I've seen it spelled with an I as well. And this is good for kidney support, uh, and you just sprinkle a little bit on your rat's wet food, and they will eat it pretty easily. And this is just a good way to support their kidneys and help prevent their kidneys from degrading faster. So it's a good way to support and assist them. And you can also add in a oil high in omega-3s. For example, flax oil is really good at that. So is salmon oil, but you have to be careful with salmon oil because it can have a high level of vitamin A in it. And vitamin A in large quantities is toxic to rats. So you want to make sure that you're not giving them a huge quantity of vitamin A. So personally, I prefer this flaxseed oil, also known as linseed oil, uh, because that's not something you have to worry about. Basically, you just want it to be high in omega-3s, which this is. And you can find this in the health aisle of most grocery stores. As you can see, Donut really likes it. <laughs> She's been getting it nightly and she is a big fan. Uh, this is also typically pretty easy to give them. Oftentimes they'll just take it straight, but if they don't take it straight, you can mix it in some <laughs> wet food. And Tona is a big fan. So these two are really great supplements. Now, other than supplements and diet, you can also add in a diuretic on the more medical side of things. This is something you'd have to talk to your vet about because diuretics are going to be prescription only. However, it can help some, especially if your rat is pretty far along in kidney failure. But typically, unless they're dealing with a very severe case, uh, you're usually just going to be looking at changing the diet, making it more kidney friendly, and adding in some supplements. 
You can also add in dandelion leaf as a natural diuretic, but it's not as effective as anything you'd get from your vet. So of course, if your rat is really struggling, it's best to talk to your vet. But yeah, that's pretty much what you can do for your rats with kidney failure. There's not a whole lot out there, unfortunately. Uh, it's one of those things that you often see in older rats, especially older males. And it's also one of those things that people often kind of confuse for old age. Or I guess I shouldn't say confuse for old age. It's more like it's one of those things that causes a lot of the typical old age symptoms in rats. That is to say, a lot of times people will be like, okay, my rat's getting old and this is why they're, you know, acting more slow and they're kind of fluffy and they're drinking more. But oftentimes that's because they actually have kidney failure going on. And what you're really seeing is their kidneys just starting to degrade and function, which unfortunately kidneys and rats are pretty sensitive and they are one of their kind of weaker organs, so to speak. Um, they're just one of those things that tend to start to fail sooner than the other organs, which is unfortunate when it comes to rats. You know, they're just not long-lived animals, but one of the first things to go does tend to be the kidneys. Anyways, that's pretty much it as far as kidney failure goes. As far as donut here in particular, I have her on a kidney-friendly diet, and I've put her on kidney-friendly supplements, so these two right here. And on top of that, because donut here has a pituitary gland tumor and gets supplementary feeding for it, I've gone ahead and switched her supplementary feeding to something that's more protein-friendly as well. So she does seem to be doing better. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, it's not really an all-inclusive list, but hopefully this gives you some ideas on treatments for kidney failure and what it looks like. Um, Miss Donut here is doing pretty well, like I said, but uh, I am definitely keeping an eye on her because she has all these different issues going on. And well, that's just uh, sometimes part of having an older rat, unfortunately. So, you know, she's doing a pretty good job, all things considered. But yeah, I will see you guys later, and I hope this video was helpful. Bye!